Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Data Pairs. If this is the very first time that you're watching my videos, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, comment, like, all of that that you usually do on YouTube, I think. Today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the topics that I already published as a blog post in my blog, but I didn't really do any video about it and I think this one is slightly different. So I wanted to do a video specifically for this one. It's going to be, I think, hopefully a quick one. Let's see how that goes. In one of my blog posts, I was talking about how you can show your filter selections in your report until I found out about a little thing that changed everything for me, which is I found out that you can add dynamic titles to your charts, which is like amazing. I want to show you a very nice way that you can show your filter selections directly in the title of your chart. So instead of you having to add a new visual, a new text box where you add that measure, you don't need to do that anymore. You can just put that as the title of your chart and it's kind of a description. So it looks a lot nicer. It looks something like this. Similar to the solution that I've talked about in my blog before, but again, slightly different. So let's jump into the tutorial and I'll see you there. So as per usual, I just want to show you how this looks like when you open your report. I've done here a line chart, which has a separate title. As you can see here, this is a text box, but all this description is part of the chart itself. It's not like a separate text box. And this is showing things like the market that is selected, the country, the cities, and so on. So I want to, to show you this in practice. So I'm just going to select a different country because right now you can see there is a lot of cities because I didn't select any city here, but I think you will get the point after I select the cities. As you can see here, it shows me my market is Canada, my country is Canada and the cities I selected. And all of this is part of the title of the line chart itself. It's not like a separate text box. So let me just select again a different countries. So again, as you can see, I selected my country and of course this automatically updated the, the chart title to show me the market that I selected based on the country selection and also the cities that are available for me to drill down into. So how did I build this? So here I have a, a different page and I just want to show you how I built this like from scratch. So we have a title again that is a separate title, it's a text box, it's not part of the chart itself. Um, and for the title of the chart, again, if you didn't read my latest, one of the latest blog posts. I was talking about how you can show your filter selections, but as a text box, because I honestly, I didn't know you could do this in titles. No, but apparently you can. I'm going to basically redo my whole idea and adapt it to a chart title. In this case here, I have my chart title here. If you go to the general, on your formatting pane, then you go to the title, you can write whatever you want, of course, sales over time. But the thing is, this is like a normal text. It's not dynamic. It's not picking up my selections, as you can see. But you can see that is this uh, like function symbol in front of my text. So I can use this conditional formatting on my text based on a field value. So which means that if I have a measure that will bring me all the selections that I've done with my filters, then the title of the chart will be that measure, meaning that it will show my filter selections. The secret for this is to have that measure. So I was uh, working on this like 30 minutes ago and I've built that measure already. So the secret for the measure is the function selected value and con concat next. For the country, because I have a single selection on my slicer, it doesn't matter if I have more than one selection. I just use selected value because selected value will pick up the selection that I've made in my slicer. I did the same thing for the market in this case, because it's the same thing. You can only select one market. For the city, my users will be able to select more than one city. So this can become a problem because if you have a lot of cities like in that country and you have a lot of data for those cities, you have a lot of cities, not data. So if you have a lot of cities in that country, 
that all will show in this description of your chart. So what I had to do is use the concatenex function and this function will get me the distinct values for the city. The reason I'm using distinct is because I don't have a, a dimensional table, so I don't have like single values for city. The same city can show up multiple times in my sample data table. So I can't just bring the city itself because it will basically duplicate the values. If you have like New York showing up 20 times, then New York will show up in my description 20 times, which is not what I want. I just want a single kind of values for the cities. That's why I'm using distinct. And then I want them separated by a comma. This is all that I had to do. Again, this is this function here is to deal with multiple selections. This will allow you to have multiple selections and to still show those multiple selections in your chart title. In the end, I just, I used variables because I just prefer to use variables if I can. What I'm going to return is the description with the country market and everything that is selected. So I will have the market text and then I will bring in the selected market then I have this uh, a little like slash bar, like uh, vertical bar, I don't know how to call it. We have this bar that separates like this kind of part of the description to a new part of the description, which is the country. So I did the same thing for the country. Again, just a normal text saying country and next I just added the selected country that I got from my variable up here. For the city, because I have my concatenex function already, I can just do the exact same thing, which is just bring me the description that is just city and then the city itself. This measure will be enough to bring you the title, the dynamic title that you want that will show again market, country and city. So this is my measure. Now I have to bring this measure to my chart. If I go here to the formatting pane, to general, and then to the title, again, you can see that is this uh, symbol for a function, which is, uh, allows you to do some conditional formatting over your title. By the way, you can also do conditional formatting, a really nice idea. If you want chart titles to change colors based on whatever, this is a good way to do it too. Again, I didn't know you could do conditional formatting on chart titles now. So I'm here in my conditional formatting kind of pop-up and I'm going to use the field value as my formatting style and now I'm going to get my new measure that basically brings all that text about the country, the market and so on. My measure is here, it's the title for the, for, it's the title, sorry, for the sales over time chart. I'm going to click OK and now as you can see, it shows up very small. Probably I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So now, as you can see, I can see the description of the country I selected and the corresponding cities that I have available, the market that it belongs to, and it shows already formatted, but you can, of course, format this um, visual or the title for this visual. You can go to the title, select a different font, select a different font size, if it's bold or not, the alignment and so on. So you, you have a, a few tricks that you can use here. Just one of the tricks is I'm going to select a country that I know has a lot of, of cities. Sorry. If you have a country, if you have a selection that has a lot of options. So in this case, a lot of cities inside Argentina. So you can see it gives you three rows and then it stops. By default, this will not even give you three rows in the formatting pane in the title. By default, this will come like in disable the text wrap. So you will only see one line here like this. So it's important for you to activate or to enable that text wrap so you can at least see the three rows. So if you go again to the formatting pane, just enable the text wrap so you can see more rows and you can see more selections. If you want to show like 20 different things in the description, I don't do this because it will not look very nice, but it's really, really cool if you want to show like not a lot of selections from your filters, it will show really, really nicely. As you can see here, if I select another one, this shows really, really nicely. And again, gives a lot more insights to your end users because you might have end users that are very proficient with Power BI and they know exactly when anything like 
is selected from your from your slicer everything else filters by that selection that you made in on your filter or slicer but some other people are not that savvy they are just studying with power bi and they need a little bit more help a little bit more like descriptions over your charts and so on or about what's selected what's not so this is a really really nice way to do that yeah this is my trick using again the concatenex function which is amazing and i love it now and again just another way to show a lot of a lot more information to your end users without necessarily cluttering the page by adding multiple visuals and so on this at least saves you the the time for you of you to build another visual a text box in this case so you can use the title directly just and comment down below if you have any more ideas for my next videos and I'll see you next week.